Hello. Please take a seat by the fire. Today's story takes us to the town of Irvine and the intertwined drama of the Montgomery and Eglinton families. This is the story of The Devil and the Irish Maid, published by Anna Blair in her book Tales of Ayrshire, published in 1983. There was consternation in the Montgomery pantry. The young mistress, wife to General Robert Montgomery, was expecting her aristocrat in-laws, the Earl and Countess of Eglinton, to pay a visit to her Irvine home. And the word had just come up from her steward that a number of small but valuable pieces of table and ornamental silver were missing. The steward, a trusted long-term servant, suggested that a new Irish serving maid had stolen them and he brought her upstairs to face her master and mistress. The story goes that, although there were a dozen other servants, the accusation against the maid was put bluntly and without any expressions of doubt, and that Irish temper rose in the girl and what she said was injustice. Sure, I never laid a finger on your silver's mistress, and I'll find the one that did, though I have to raise the devil himself. Robert Montgomery admitted to himself that they had been hasty to lay blame so certainly, without more evidence, and he let the girl's ungodly outburst pass as rash Irish anger. She was sent downstairs again, while they considered further how to discover the real culprit, if this girl was speaking the truth and was innocent. But the maid had meant what she said, and was seen by others to go down into the lay cellars with a Bible a riddle and a handful of feathers. A gossiping watcher saw her drawing a circle around herself on the loose earth of the cellar floor and turned the riddle around it on end anti-clockwise, all the while with nine black feathers in her hand that she had pulled from the tail of a black rooster. Then she read Psalm 51 in a verse from chapter 19 of Revelation. This cantrip materialised the figure of the devil himself, risen half out of the ground, dressed in seaman's clothing with a dark blue cap. The spy then told how the devil asked the maid what she wanted of him. She put her question, and when he answered it, she cast three of her black feathers on him and bade him back where he had come from. At this, he disappeared back into the earth. The girl then read the verse from Revelation backwards, and Satan this time rose from the floor with one leg above the ground. After further question and answer, the maid discarded three more feathers at him, and he subsided and sank. A third time, after the backward reading from Revelation, right out of the ground, in black now, with a long black tail. Third question, three more feathers cast at him, and then Satan disappeared altogether. The whole house shuddered. Whether at this departure, or with the thunderstorm raging outside and the clipe was carried to the general of the ongoings in the cellars. There was a hideous howling of the town's dogs, and milkmaids told later how the very goats they were milking dried up on the spot. 
at exactly the time that the Irish serving maid was called again to see her master and mistress. She entered their sitting chamber, way-faced and shivering, and told them that she had had of the devil the name of the thief of the household silver. Say the name, ordered Montgomery sternly. She said it, and told them also that the pieces were hidden in a chest under the bed of another servant. There the silver was found, as she had said, but the master was by now more concerned that he had apparently a witch girl meddling with Satan in his service, more so that he had a common thief whose truck was only with her own greed. The witch was sent to prison to be dealt with after the Eglinton visit was safely over. Legend does not tell of her torture or browbeating, only that she confessed to having studied black arts from a Dr. Colvin, a man learned in magic herbal potions brewed from the Irish countryside and in the incantations needed to materialise the devil himself. <laughs>